What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? Don't ever wait for your doctor to order blood tests. With Private MD Labs, you can get your blood test prescription online in under one minute and go directly to over 4,000 lab locations in the United States. They offer every blood test imaginable at affordable prices with highly accurate results from tried and true state-of-the-art blood testing diagnostics. In fact, I've been using Private MD Labs for more than a decade. Their blood tests are much more in-depth and accurate than any at-home pinprick or worthless saliva test. Skip the intrusive doctor questions and get the exact tests that I recommend. Be proactive and get your panels today. Go to privatemdlabs.com forward slash JC to take 15% off your order. Send you guys love and light. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio by a very interesting man by the name of Steve Sedmak. Steve, how are you, brother? I am well. I am well, other than the things we've been talking about. Um, And uh, that's what we're going to get into today, though, right? (laughs) We are. And uh, so let me give you guys Steve's bio. But first off, uh, Steve watched me on a podcast with Mike and Dr. Bayer Lando on the Alpha Vedic podcast. Um, and he was inspired to reach out to me and he did. And we, him and I have had a couple of very profound conversations uh, since then. And, and because I am authentic and transparent, uh, even though I have this made up name of Jay Campbell, um, he has helping me because I am definitely struggling right now with my, um, who I am in the world. And it's been very interesting because I've had this bullshit for like the last eight days, by the way, today is uh, Wednesday, January 26th for marking this. And I've been struggling. I've been really questioning my purpose in the world. I felt, you know, depressed, negative, whatever. Uh, And so Steven reached out to me on Monday night uh, and him, him and I talked for about 45 minutes and he really helped me. Uh, but I'm still struggling, you know, full disclosure, very much dis- uh, struggling with who I am in the pl- in this planet right now. And I have a lot of questions about what's happening. And so he's been very um, kind and uh, and very, you know, transparent in helping me. So this podcast, I want to say, is also going to be probably hopefully very helpful to a lot of people who are also dealing with similar things. So let me give you guys his uh, intro or his bio. He's 73-year-old retired businessman. Uh, has been married to the same lady for 51 years with two children and eight grandkids. He has done many, many things, played many, many roles. And the role he is choosing to play these days is apprentice custodian and doorman at Shope Creek Wilderness, which is 131 acres in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, 10 miles from the center of Asheville, North Carolina, which I'm very familiar with, by the way. Uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains are part of the Appalachian chain, the oldest mountains in the United States. Shope Creek Wilderness is a place of learning, a place of alignment, a place of remembering and reawakening, a place of sharing, a place where magic lives, dragons and yeti come to play and children shine. Uh, They offer those who choose uh, or who come by chance the opportunity to experience themselves in novel and expanded ways. Uh, Their offerings include natural and man-made attractions focused on personal alignment and realization of the true self. That's why he's here talking to you guys and to me, of course, on the J. Campbell podcast. We call our energy-based interactions play dates, and we take full advantage of our forest setting, our flowing water resources, the numerous energy vortexes, and being in the energetic apron of Mount Mitchell, which is the highest point on the eastern seaboard. Rumi said, our ideas beyond beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase, each other doesn't make any sense. Stephen calls this field, calls this the field of infinite possibilities, and it is where he chooses to experience his choice 
of being human this time around. So Stephen is a very advanced soul, my brothers and sisters. Uh, that's obviously, again, why he's here today. And again, he has uh, gratefully uh, helped me uh, in a couple of conversations since then. And I know this podcast is going to help a great many of you. So I will jump into it. Uh, before we get into the points, um, again, it's end of January, 2022. The world is in a very uh, tumultuous place. Um, you know, as you said it, as when we were talking, you know, whether it's a collective dark night of the soul, um, or it's, you know, many other things that could be labeled mankind is going through, um, a rough, a rough patch. Can you kind of just elaborate in your opinion, uh, where we go this year and beyond? Well, I, I think the, um, the baseline is when we let go of what has been, we allow what can be, and the key word there is allow, and what can be is beyond anything that we can imagine, because our imagination is tied to what we already know. And so as we allow ourselves to just let go of it all, let go of it all, and realize there is no other, that, that's, the whole, that's the whole issue here is the other. There is no other. We are all source energy expressing right. as and through us in this moment as the universe expands and we're moving into territory you know again the language here is not it doesn't really work well but we're moving into a place we've never been before so mm -hmm. it is going to feel strange um yeah. i'm on the tail end you know as we've talked i i call it the ascension flu <laughs> and this is something that we collectively called in to assist this transition. It isn't happening to us. It's happening because this is our choice of how we want to expand with the universe. So, and that's going to be difficult for people to, to relate to because we're, we're so conditioned. We're so um, used to uh, being a victim and there is no victimhood. This yeah. is all choice. Everything is choice. We choose what to come. We choose a career. You know, all of this is choice. And we chose this. We're the ones that created the pandemic. It didn't happen to us. We called it in so we could hit the pause button and go, right. wait a minute. Let's step back, guys, and take a look and see what's working and what isn't. And if you step back and look, most of what's out there doesn't work anymore. Yeah. So yeah. let's let it go. And that transition, as we let go, as we let go and we move into areas that are not familiar, you know, and yeah. that can be, that can have, I was trying to explain to somebody my experience of the Ascension flu and there aren't really, it, it, they're, they're different symptoms that are similar, but not the same as anything I've ever experienced before. Right. right. You, I think they're the same, right? It's like, wait a minute, this doesn't feel right, but it's not, you know, I don't know what it is. So yeah. that's, where, that's where we are, individually and collectively. And it's different. And so when we can individually and collectively align with the understanding that different is neutral, we're the ones that then decide whether it's good or bad or right or wrong or all of those types of things. And we're experiencing different now in a very, very major way. So we can begin to start to choose to, well, wait a minute, how do I shift my experience of different? Rather than taking all of the stuff that we've used in the past and defining it and go, oh, this is this, this is that. No, just let it inform us. Let it inform us. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, well, I have a lot of questions. Um, <laughs> for, I mean, you have, Me some, well, Me I mean, too, you have some profound talking points and I think we can go a lot of different directions. Um, you know, some things you said, I started to think about, you know, I'm constantly talking about everyone chooses whether they're in resonance or dissonance. And, right. you know, maybe I'm going through this victimhood aspect of life right now, because I've always been a person of resonance, not always, but, you know, in my last eight to nine years, as I've really risen this uh, path of, you know, walking the, the, the seeker's path or the spiritual path or whatever, you know, I've obviously become highly personal accountable and, you know, I've taken a mindset that I'm responsible for everything. You know, everything is a choice and I can either take ownership for it and become sovereign, empowered and free, or I can be the opposite, which is again, in victimhood, disempowered. Um, and I almost feel like right now I'm, <laughs> 
I think the solution or the answer has just come to me in talking to you, as I told you that it would, is that like I am being forced right now to understand the opposite of way I've been, which is I am now embracing this victimhood concept of like, woe is me. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm now stuck in this mindset of like, who fucking cares uh, about any of this because it's all meaningless where it's not meaningless, but that's what I'm labeling it right now. So again, I'm kind of like in this place of like, I'm in the dissonant frequencies or band waves right now. And it's like, I don't have to be, I'm choosing to be there because it just feels right. Or it feels what, like where I should be right now. And it's like you said, it's part of this, uh, whatever this is of us accepting that we're no longer separate. Like you were, you were saying off air that, you know, we've all been in the here for the most part, most of us been on the hero's journey for so long now. And now it's like, okay, the hero's journey doesn't serve us because it's a all or nothing uh, proposition. Yeah, it's been a storyline that we've been playing out. I mean, if you look at in, you know, all of the movies and all of, you know, whether it's Star <laughs> Wars or whether it's all about the hero's journey and it's over. <laughs> You know, been there, done that. We don't need that any longer. It got us here, but it's not going to take us to where we can go next. And where we can go next literally is beyond anything that we can imagine. Once we, and again, there's nothing the matter with the imagination. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool. However, it's based on what we already know. So this is very, very new territory. This is this is territory that we haven't in our consciousness during the you know this time around it's beyond that it's beyond that so if we could go back you know and i did this earlier but i'm going to do it again if it's okay if we could go back to before the big bang right yeah. Yeah. okay and everything is source this is my little symbol for source and there isn't anything else and then one day for whatever reason source expressed itself and what it did two energies pop out that was the first creation. Those two energies never existed before. And then those two energies are source energy experiencing itself. And they started dancing. And then when they touched, boom, there were four. And when those four touched, there were 16. And when those 16 touched, there were 256. When the 256 touched, there's 1028. And if your math is better than mine, you can continue going. But that's the universe expanding. And now if you're familiar with Michael Newton and, and Brian Weiss and, and people that have mapped out the territory in between lives, you know that we're multidimensional beings. Right. And so when we choose to come to this plane, and it is a choice, we choose an, a, a percentage of our soul essence to incarnate here on this planet. And when we do that, we create a curriculum for ourselves. Right. And that curriculum for you is different than me. Everybody's curriculum is unique. In fact, if we think of the curriculum as reality, however many people there are on the earth, that's how many realities there are. Right. Because we each have a unique curriculum except for one thing. This plane, this plane of existence is about the idea that we're separate from source. Right. So we create the human experience perspective which is based on the idea that we're separate from source. At the same time, because all of the energies on this plane are opposite and complementary at the same time, right. there's also the aspect of us that knows our higher self. We call it our higher self. No, higher self right. Yeah. So, and that knows that we are source energy. Now, our tagline here is shift happens. And the shift that is happening is from this perspective, where we think we are human beings having a spiritual experience. To the, to the true self, which is a spiritual being, knowing that it's having a human experience. Right. So the spiritual being knows that every experience that it has expands the universe. Right. And that's why we're here, to expand the universe. We are source energy expressing as and through us to expand the universe. And it's that simple. Now, when we choose to come here again, and we choose the idea of being separate from source, we lose our identity. Right. So we have to create one. And the way we do that is with four things. Competition, comparison, conformity, creativity. So it, it, did you have siblings? Were you, uh, did you I'm have siblings? I'm the oldest of nine kids. Oh, you're the oldest of nine. Okay. So I'm the oldest of four. When you and I came in, we had the full plate of what the full menu to choose from. And then each subsequent sibling had one less menu item. 
and began competing with us at in order to get what they needed from their parent from our parents, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you can see the competition and comparison going on even out in the world today. We we got the Olympics coming up, right? What's that? What's that about? Well, let me compete and show that I'm, right. you know, all the competition, comparison, then conformity. Jay, sit up straight. You know, don't talk with your mouth full. Pay attention. Do finish this. That do that. Plate. Yeah, what was that? Finish that plate. Yeah, finish that plate. They're starving kids in China. At least that's the story <laughs> I got when I was growing up. Yeah. So that's conformity, right? And all of these things were told, oh, you have to do this. You have to do that. You have to do this. You have to do that. That's conformity. But then creativity comes in. And that's what we're losing sight of these days. We're losing sight of how creative we are as human beings. Because you created Jay Campbell. That's not who you are. You are source energy right. expressing as and through you as Jay. But look at what a great job you've done. Now, you may look at it today and go, oh, yeah, it's all <laughs> bullshit and stuff like that. But it isn't. I mean, look at how cool it is. I created yeah. Steve. You know, right. your wife created that. You're, we've all created these personas. It's not yeah. who we are, but it's how we how we have chosen to allow source to experience itself. And as we move out of that idea that we are separate and we move into the place where we realize that we are the same energy that creates the universe and we stop doing our creativity through the lens of fear. Because when we agree to the idea that we're separate, that's when fear enters. Right. Now, fear is a frequency. It's an energy. It's a life force. It's also source energy. Right. And the only thing that and as a life force, it wants to live like anything else on this planet. It wants to live. And the only thing that fear can live in is human beings and by extension, our pets, because trees don't get afraid. Rocks right. don't get afraid. Right. Animals in the wild don't get afraid. Everybody has a survival instinct. I'm not talking about that. Survival instinct is how we respond to stay alive. We're from a, I mean, we're here because we're from a long line of survivors. Yeah, we know how to survive. But yeah. when that event, whatever the survival event is, happens, when it's over, so is survival instinct. Then right. fear comes in. And fear right. is put is projecting into the past and into the future. And that's what we're all faced with right now. We've called in a beyond graduate level course in fear right now. And so you look and who's the boogeyman of the day? Is it 5G or is it the, you know, is it the deep state or is it, you know, the aliens <laughs> or is it the, the aliens, aliens that are coming? Bro. What was that? I said, it's the reptilians, bro. Oh, there, there it is. Yeah, it's it's those. The, it's and all of that. Right. Who's the who's who is the who is the boogeyman of the day? Yeah. And if you if you listen to the news right now, I guess it's Russia, right? Because they're going to invade. Right, right, right. Because they're going to invade. Yeah, right. Exactly. So when we can see that for what it is, we can begin to disengage from that. And as we disengage from that, we can become in alignment with who we really are. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're looking to level up your life from a mind, body, and spiritual perspective, join the fully optimized health private membership group today. There is no better place online to discuss hormones, peptides, fitness, fat loss, supplements, and even raising your consciousness with an elite tribe of men and women. You also get to speak to me directly every single week in the Ask Me Anything. Join today. Go to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up and I'll see you and talk to you soon. Let me ask sure. you though, yeah. uh, this is a very profound podcast, but you know, the issue is still there are so many people who are driven and beholden by fear. Yes. And more, there are many more of them than there are of those in resonance not driven by fear, right? Because all you have is love or fear. You're either, you know, control, not control, but you're, you, you, you govern your, you know, life by whether or not you live in love or you live in fear. And so many people, as you said, you know, are now, you know, beholden to that from what we've called it in the last two years, whatever this is, you know, whatever, whatever COVID is and whatever parts and parts isn't, but how is, how are we going to get the people who are so beholden by fear? Do they have to get out of this walk, you know, opt out of this dimension and to let more light in? I mean, I mean, how is it going to happen? Because I mean, again, if you look around, the narrative is also fear-based 
So it just seems like it's much harder for people to get out of these, this operandus of fear. Okay. So let's, you, you, you mentioned resonance earlier, right? Resonance. So in, in the, in the understanding of resonance, there's something called entrainment right. and that's how one resonant uh, resonance affects another resonance. Right. So the key is, is to be you because as you are, you, as you do, as you align or as I align, like when we spoke the other night, you said, Oh, I feel different, right? Okay. We shared a resonance. We expanded our resonance and we moved a little bit outside of this fear. You know, and as that happened, it began to have less purchase. And so it's the, the again, it's it's our ability, each one. There was something somebody told me the other day, one person aligned is more powerful than a million people who are not. All right. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's not. But as we begin to recognize and choose not to dance with fear. So again, if we come back to this, it's always a choice. This is source. This is us at the base. And we're always a choice. Fear, no fear. Fear, no fear. Now, you say fear or love. I don't see it that way. Love is love is an energy that embraces everything. Love is what source energy is. Right. But as human beings, we tend to do these things from the human perspective. So we know that source is energy, right? Everybody, you know, not everybody, but we know that, right? Yeah. So that means we're energy. But if you look at what we do, look at the Bible. It says God created man in his image. Forget all the gender stuff. Right. But that means we're energy. Right. Right. So, but what do we do? We go, oh, no, it's this guy that sits in a chair up there right. with a long beard. And he tells us whether we're good or bad. We take our ideas and we project them back onto onto things. So this whole it's 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 reverse. It's what we do as a as a human perspective, which is what we came here to experience. And when we decide to start letting those things go, because again, in every moment you're deciding, every moment you're choosing, every, every moment you're choosing. So when you get in touch with your body to feel, okay, I'm uncomfortable, that means fear is constricting. So right. let me just begin to pair away at that. And it's small steps. Let me get, begin to find that and let me begin to let it go. There's nothing to be afraid of. Let me play with that idea. I'm afraid there's nothing to be afraid of. Or let me see what that feels like. And I'm not quite there yet. I'm back over here. And we begin to navigate and negotiate. It's a choice in every moment as to what you experience and how you feel and what you're choosing to, and then align it with your body. Because every thought, every idea that we have, the language of the mind, will have a feeling associated with it. And every feeling will have a sensation associated with it. And when the idea and the feeling and the sensation are in alignment, we're in alignment. Now, when fear is present, it cuts us off from our, from our feelings and from our cognitive sense, literally. Right. So remember that guy, um, Wiener, the politician? Yeah, you know, that, that, that you did the sexting and all that kind of yeah. stuff. That's because the the energy of of the of the post that he was given was beyond his body's ability to process it, and it pulled him down into the the, the what's called the reptilian brain, which is a stupid name, but it's our survival. And survival is about survival and reproduction. And so all of his stuff is about the reproductive process, right? And people go, what was he thinking? What was he feeling? Well, he wasn't because he, he, he had come down into survival mode and he was just functioning with one third of his capacity. So again, it's, it's a way to look at things and a way to understand that when any organism experiences an energetic that is either overwhelming or novel, it's going to have a set reaction. The first thing is startle response. Like, whoa, the hell was that? Second is orientation. Am I safe? Am I safe? Am I safe? And that's where people are stuck right now. Are we safe? Are we safe? Are we safe? What's going on here? This is unfamiliar. That's, it's, it's a step. It's a process of moving through this. And once we're able to determine, wait a minute, hold on a second. Here, here's the logic. There's nothing to be afraid of. If you are the same energy that creates the universe, what the hell do you have to be afraid of? I mean, really, it just doesn't even make any sense. Now, just saying that isn't going to do it. You got to play with it. You got to work with it. You got to try it. Try it on. See, and if that doesn't work, try something else. You're a creative being. 
you will come up with whatever is appropriate for you to navigate and move through this. Because if in the end, it's not okay, it ain't the end. And there isn't any end because it just keeps, it's, it's, right. it's on and on and on and on and on. So one of the things that showed up that I'll, that I'll weave into this now is water. Okay. For whatever reason, water has become very present. And there's a, there's a woman by the name of um, Veda Austin. And Veda, what she does is she takes water and she puts it in a Petri dish, right? And then she freezes it and it shows her something. And you can, if you go and check her out, VedaAustin.com, go check it out and look. And you begin to see how our thoughts, how our ideas, how what we do influences water. Okay. Now, what's more real than water? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's everywhere. We are 70% water, they say. And 99% of the molecules in our body are water. So we're water. And what we think what we think, it's, it's, like, it's not like, oh, our thoughts create reality. Um, maybe, but it's a little bit different than that. Our thoughts influence reality because we're not separate. So your thoughts and my thoughts together with the collective are what is what forming is what's forming what we call or what we think of as reality and the shared experience we all have. So we're all in this thing together because we called it in. <coughs> And our opportunity is to begin to let the stuff go. So as whatever shows up for you, like you'd said, or you don't want to reinvent yourself anymore. Okay, great. So then don't. Allow, allow yourself to just experience what's there for you. And your true self, your higher self, whatever it is, will inform you. And as we expand into that by letting go of fear, which we hold in our bodies, you know, that's the movement. That's the process as I see it. And again, these are just ideas. This isn't right. It's not wrong. This isn't the truth. What is true is always true. Everything else is a perspective. And I'm just sharing with you perspectives and ideas that you can play with. Because when we move into the field of infinite possibility, that's the idea. Let's play. And that's what we're doing, you and I right now, playing with ideas. So let me kick it back to you and yeah, you know, questions. You know, what, no, what's I mean, going I'm on? just listening. Um, it's the Jay Campbell podcast who interviews other people, so I <laughs> try not to involve my opinions. Unless, but I think it's important. I think your opinion. Well, no, I mean, of course, but I mean, like, you know, we're in going in a lot of different directions here. But I mean, I don't necessarily agree with you. Okay, uh, cool. I'm, I'm listening, but I definitely do not necessarily agree with you which is fine because that's the spirit of debate. I mean, I see the world differently than you see the world. Um, we could definitely go deeper and talk about quantum physics um, and creating reality and shaping reality and stuff. But like, you know, like you have energy flows where attention goes. That's obvious. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's expand the narrative beyond fear. I asked you that and you very, uh, how would I say it? Like, um, professionally navigated around it. I look at the world right now and I do not see, I do not see this planet escaping fear. I, I don't know, you know, what is going to happen, but you seemingly have a positive mindset of it. And I don't, in fact, I would tell you that the majority of the people who chose that route are going to have to deal with some sad and negative repercussions. Now I can't prove that, but that's my opinion. Uh, but I feel that that is a choice that each soul, you know, again, has made to navigate and maneuver through this uh, dimension. And I don't, again, whether or not it's, uh, you know, uh, a collective of negativity or, you know, uh, dark beings or energies or whatever. But I want to understand, like, how all these people who have chosen to get, like, how are they going to all of a sudden get better, in your opinion? Well, again, better is, what does better mean? Here's every experience that every human being has right. expands the universe. Okay. Uh, okay. I agree with that. Okay. There is no good or bad. There okay. is no right or wrong. I can it, agree with that. Okay. So if that's what their choice was, that experience will expand the universe. Okay. Period. But I agree. That's it. So we're, we're, we're more on the same page than, than not. It just, 
I'm attempting to define things from a linear perspective. Yeah. You're not. You're you're definitely looking beyond this and just looking at the multidimensional aspect of it. Well, okay. So if we look at, we, let's do this. Let's play this one a little bit. So if we look out at the planets, right? And we see all these planets out there in our universe, you know, whether it's Jupiter and Saturn and all of those types of things. And each of those planets is a, is like an energy vortex. It's like a, um, it's like a, uh, a chakra, right? But here's how linear we are. We say, oh, there's seven chakras and they're lined up like this. And, you know, da, da, da. and OK, that will give you a certain set of experiences. But look out and see what's going on out there. The chakras that are out there are always moving. They're always in a different alignment. They're always shifting. They're always. And we're so linear. We think of, oh, you need to raise our consciousness. Well, that's very linear because if we expand. It's kind of like if you throw a pebble in in the water, right? Right. And you see those ripples come out, yep. right? That's a linear representation, but at the same time, there's energy that's coming up from right. that pebble, and there's right. energy that's going down. Right. So rather than raise our consciousness, let's talk about expansion. And expansion moves in every every direction, Got and it. there is no right direction or wrong direction. It's just expansion. It's I got just, it. And everything else becomes judgment and what we've been. Um, and I, I mean, no, you're right. This is a good point. You're right. Because I'm looking at it from a, a linear perspective and it's like, okay, these people have chosen, you know, to go back to that point, these people have chosen the V yeah, because they feel whatever it's going to do for them. And I'm looking at a condemning, judging viewpoint of it saying like, you stupid mf -er, like, you know, <laughs> How can you, you know, choose, you know, that dissonant frequency path, you know, and, and I say, you know, about the V, uh, I, I know some, you know, pretty advanced applied kinesiologists and, you know, muscle testers who have tested the intent and it all, every one of them like is below 20, right? So like from a understanding that does not have positive intention, you know, I still look at it as, okay, well, if that's what you chose then you, you know, are part of that. But again, that's linear too. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're more looking at it from, a, again, which is good, a, a, what I would call a, a higher dimensional perspective. Or just a different perspective that allows you to not get caught up in the constriction of, oh, somebody's doing something to me. Right. Condemn it. It's, it's condemnation and judgment. Yeah. And, it's, and, and, it's, and at, the, at the base, if you look at all of it, it's going to be fear. Right. It's about, it's about fear. And when we can learn to identify when fear is present and not dance with it, because the only purpose of fear is to create more fear. Right. And anytime we put any energy into that, and one of the keys and the reason why I'm responding, because I wanted to shift the narrative. If you look at how much of the narrative is based on the other, oh, there's these people doing this, there's these right. others doing this, there's these, that all feeds fear. And that's going to create more of that. And when we can find a way to shift so that we stop that, so that we eliminate the reference to other and realize there is no other, right. we're all we're all part of this. This there is no other. It's all That's sort right. of energy expressing. We're all connected. I mean, you and I had a chat the other day, and and we had a certain level of connection, energetic resonance that we shared. Right? Okay. And we can do that with everybody. So if you want to know again how to shift things, if that's your Shift yourself. Yeah. Begin to align with the resonance of knowing that you are source energy over here. Your source energy, or align with this over here because it's not something that you're ready to let go of yet. And either one is okay. You get to choose. So if you want to choose the idea of um, hopelessness, you know, then go into it, experience it experience what that's like for you and then decide do i want to spend any more time here or not and yeah. and then begin to navigate out of that however you choose to do that and as we you know so it, well anyhow so well, well, so let me i mean i like this you know this is truly looking at things from a much higher state of awareness because you're not labeling you're not judging you know you're you're really looking at it with divinely sensitive eyes and that you, you know everybody is doing the best they can you know i go back to like what hawkins you know said and that is that everything is happening exactly as is divinely intended 
you know, and anything, any resistance to that statement is just your personalized resistance because you want to label or judge or condemn or whatever, you know, onto that. So like, if you really look at this and I'll just give you a perfect example, you know, to relate it so that people can understand this, that person is at a soul level, not separate from source and is choosing, you know, again, a behavior that they truly believe, you know, at base essence is okay for them. Right. Well, they're, they're making a choice and that choice creates an experience and that experience Which expands the universe or uh, uh, not contraction, but uh, expansion. Yes. And every, every experience, every, every, every experience is unique and expands the universe. Right. And so we, again, no, no, hold on, let's stop right there. Cause that's very difficult for people to get. To, to oh get yeah. Away. Yes. Yeah. So if you and I right now were to go put our foot in the ocean, our right foot in the ocean, right? You'd have an experience of that. I'd have an experience of that. Yes. That's a unique experience. That will never happen again. That experience in that way will never happen again. And those two experiences expanded the universe. Right. And again, we, we make up all of this stuff about, oh, my purpose is to do this, my purpose is to do that, and all of those kinds of things. And, you know, that's the that's what we came here to experience. There's nothing the matter with that. I don't that. have that anymore. I can't yeah, keep well, doing that. Okay, but that's what we came here until we don't do it anymore. And then right. we realize, wait a minute, there's a lot more. All right, look at it this way. Let's let, let's go back to the ocean, and I have nothing with nothing matter with the ocean, and nothing matter with sharks and things yep. like that. But when we when we incarnate as a human being, we're yep. told we live in the ocean. Okay, right. Right. Oh, and look at all the fish, and look at the coral, and look at this stuff, and look how beautiful it is. And we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it goes, oh, but here comes the sharks. Be careful. Okay, all right. So then, when we expand, one day our head pops out of the ocean, and all of a sudden we realize, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> there's a lot more than just the ocean here. Right. And as we continue to expand, we bring ourselves up out of the ocean and there's another whole world there. Now the ocean does not go away. It's still there and we can go swimming anytime we want, but we're doing it by choice. We're not a victim. Oh, and by the way, right. sharks can't live in the air. So we've, we've expanded ourselves beyond the ideas that are inherent in the ocean or the human experience perspective, which is life in the ocean. And the way that plays out is you're born, bad shit happens, and then you die. Oh, and you got to pay taxes, death and taxes. That's life the way, in the ocean. By the way, you know what? It just, tri you just not triggered me, but I just, it finally, I, I remember like, now I know your voice, you sound a little bit like George Carlin. Has anyone ever told you that? <laughs> no, no, but thank you. No, thank you. I mean, I it's a compliment, but I remember I told yeah. you on Monday, I was like, man, your voice, and it just hit me. <laughs> like when you just said death and taxes. Well, I'm I'm channeling, I'm channeling <laughs> Carlin. You have a right, they have a right to kill you. <laughs> No, but it's crazy because when you said death and taxes, it just triggered in my mind. But anyway, to yeah. go back to what you're saying, Stephen, you're making some very profound statements here. Like, I don't normally get a lot of people to come on. You know, I have very advanced conscious people, but I don't, you know, you're really putting this in a perspective where people need to be. And that is well, that, you know, everybody is exactly doing exactly what is necessary for expansion in the universe. So here's here. Look, you never have done, nor will you ever do anything wrong. You never have done, nor will you ever do anything wrong. Because See, that one every, off a lot of people. In your yeah, head. exactly. Exactly. And again, these are just seeds. Look, I'm just planting seeds. No, but it's true, though. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I yeah. would, if, you know, initially when I said I was disagreeing with you, it's because I wasn't looking at it, the expand, expanded way that you are. And so this is all really, really great because it is true that everybody is, you know, everybody is not separate. Right. When you right. understand that you're not separate and that we are all unified at that soul level, then every choice, you know, is okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because it expands the universe. We are source energy. We are that energy. And when we stop using our creativity, 
through the lens of fear, because look at all of the things we've done. We've created all the fear we've created. We've created the alien fear. We've created the, the uh, fear. We've created this fear. We've created that fear. And we keep feeding it and feeding it and feeding it and feeding it. And that's what's in the narrative right now. If you listen, listen to how much it's all pointing. Oh, it's over, you know, blah, 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 blah. and so that's what kind of initiated this. I went, okay, let's start planting some different seeds. You know, let's let's put into the narrative some ideas that aren't like that. And, right. you know, they'll either take or they won't and they'll either grow or they won't, because as the universe expands, we're all going to get there. We all get there eventually, whether it's this time or 100 lifetimes from now. And I think I shared with you this, the uh, Ram Dass story the other day. Right. Yeah. Whereas, you know, he's sitting with his guru and this guy comes up and asks the guru a question. And then the guru answers the guy and the guy leaves and Ram Dass talks to, turns to his guru and says, that guy had absolutely no idea what you were talking about. And the guru says, that's OK. It's for five lifetimes from now. Right. So they, we're just planting seeds here. And for some people, it'll germinate. Others, it won't. And that's OK. I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. I'm just, you know. Let's spread some different ideas around and let's play with it because it can be fun this way. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? If you're looking to use peptides, make sure you go to my number one source, Limitless Life Nootropics. For healing with BPC-157 and TB-500 or fat loss with Ipamorelin, CGC-1295 and AOD-9604 to immunity with TA-1, thymus and alpha-1, Limitless has a huge selection. Go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com and use my code J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. Well, one of your points, which is very profound, which is what we really are talking about, is that every experience is a choice and every experience expands. The universe. Yes, that's it. That's how see, simple it see, is. You can't say that to somebody who wants to, you know, uh, linearly, you know, classify living in the third dimension when they say that so and so chooses evil, right? Like, I mean, I could give you, a, you know, so and so kills someone, so and so is harvesting baby fetal cells, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? So those people want to instantly attack you or I, because I believe that same statement. Um, because they only see things as right or wrong or, you know, dark or yeah, light yes, or yeah. evil and, or positive. And that's, that's where they are. And that's okay because that's right. what they, that's what they chose to come here to experience this time around. So I'm sure, you know, this is not your first rodeo. And as we talk, you know, we probably, we probably danced before in many, many different oh, yeah. configurations. You know, this is, this is not new for you and I, right. except in this particular time around. So, you get to experience it all. Every possible, as a, you have the possibility to experience everything. Every, every, everything. I think and you that, came, I, by the way, I think you came back into my circle to help me. Okay. That's what I've learned in the last 40 minutes is that as I was in resistance, because you did help me on Monday night, which I mm -hmm. told you that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then more resistance, more whatever bullshit the last two days. And then, you know, fighting you even at the beginning of this call, telling you like, oh, what was me? And then just being where I'm at right now. And like, I literally sensed that part of your purpose in reconnecting with me, like you said, in this dance was to be like, to slap me out of this. Well, or to resonate you out. So you do have a different feeling, right? about yourself right now than before we started the podcast. Right? I, I, I feel a million times better. That's but, resonance. That's yeah. resonance. And yeah. we can do this as you decide to align with that resonance. Get to know that. Get to know that 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 excitement, that expansion, that possibility. This is the field of infinite possibilities. Right. Everything and anything is possible as long as we just allow it to be there. And the feeling associated with that, the feeling associated with that is excitement and things like that. And right. as you resonate that way and you go out in the world, guess what? <laughs> You're going to affect other people. Well, Just see, like we're thing is my, my normal, anybody who knows me, my normal state of being is excitement. Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm very energetic, very high vibration, very like I overwhelm less lower vibration. <laughs> you know, but I mean like, the, um, 
it's, I've just been, you know, covered up or whatever, you know, again, maybe it's the illness, whatever, a million excuses or reasons, but for whatever reason, I've just not felt this in the last eight or nine days. I've felt, yes. you know, very down. Yes. Uh, Me too. Me you know, too. Just, you know, whatever. So hopefully we're, we're helping each other, but we uh, are. Yes. Yes. This is, cool. this is you and I playing together and increasing the resonance, expanding the resonance beyond fear which is what my intention was when I reached out to you. And I just had this sense that, okay, here's, here's a way to do this. How am I, how am I gonna, how am I gonna pollinate, if you will, pollinate the narrative out there with some ideas that don't just repeat, you know, the boogeyman, the boogeyman, right, the, boogeyman right, right. the boogeyman, be very, very afraid. You know, <laughs> it's like, it's so present right well, now. Well, so, but, but like one of your other points, and you know, we're, we've, we've, we've talked about it, but just when you say, when we let go of what has been, that yes. is the hardest part for most people, including myself, you know, in what I've been experiencing in this last week, because we're defining ourselves by what has been. Correct. And so you have to literally, you know, again, that persona of Stephen Sedmack and Jay Campbell and blah, 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 whatever name, you have to be like still not be okay with whatever you have created on your hero's journey and be, you know, accepted of it. Whereas I've been resistance, even of that I've been in resistance to that too, because like, okay, I realized the hero's journey is ending. And now I'm in this like no man's land, which I can't define. But at the same time, I've been fighting the Jay Campbell saying that guy was worthless. What a fucking idiot. Yeah. And, and that so gave I'm you a set of experience again. and that gave you a set of experiences that, that perspective over here. Oh, Jay Campbell's an idiot. Blah, 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 that gave you a set of experiences, which right. expanded the universe. That's okay. There's right. nothing the matter with that. And when you're ready to stop doing that, you get to do something else. You know, I mean, basically if you're not finished with it, then continue, you know, Eat everything on your plate there, Jay. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. You got a gold star plate. You get a gold <laughs> star plate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, you're laughing. We're, we're laughing. We're laughing. We're laughing now, have right? To eat everything on your plate to get a gold star plate. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> just because you become obese, it doesn't matter. You get a gold star plate. No, I'm just kidding. But you know, you yeah, we, we come from yeah. some more. So again, here. when you let go of what has been when we're able to let go of what has been and everything that you see in form out there play with this one was named by somebody else right it already existed right, right. and it's brought it to brought us to this point now there's a difference between manifestation and creation yep manifestation is taking something that already exists and reworking it and we we're masters at that but now the opportunity is to allow creation to come through us. Right, to create a new world. Right, to allow creation to open a new world for us. We don't have to do it. All we have to do is become, the indigenous term is hollow boned. Yeah. And the more hollow our bone is, in other words, the less fear we have constricting that channel, right? So here's a different example. People are, they, they've made 5G into this, you know, boogeyman, right? Well, there's another way to look at that. If you remember dial up, right? Dial up for AOL. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. AOL, AOL, copy serve. Prodigy. Right, right. So that 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 was a that was bandwidth. And now we're at 5G. That is a great outpicturing of our ability to allow energy to move through. Mm -hmm. There's a, it, it's just an outpicturing of us. All technology is dumbed down. Uh, is is a dumbed down out picturing of what our capabilities are. Right. We could we have the ability to communicate telepathically. We have all of that right. stuff as we allow ourselves to let go of all of the stuff that we've been told. I mean, if you look at science, right, and and then you bring in the idea of entanglement theory, and you bring in the idea of the observer effect. Right. If science is, hey, I do an experiment, and when I can replicate it, it's real. Right. Right. Well, that's not even possible. You yeah. can't replicate anything. Exactly. It, 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 you know, so the whole basis of what people have made God again, because when we agree to the idea that we're separate, we put all of the all of the power out there. Therefore, you need a priest or a rabbi in order to talk to God. Well, if you are God, you don't you don't need that. You need a doctor to tell you how to get better. Well, what if there isn't anything to heal? Right. 
What if it is just this blocked energy? You need a politician to tell you how to live your life, right? So when you talk to people and you say, why do we even have it? And, and the answer is going to be, I said, do you need somebody to tell you how to live your life? And they go, no, then what do we need it for? Oh, the other. <laughs> there it is right there. Well, yeah, but they're going to do this. They're going to do that. Nah, there is no other. Right. And that just reinforces fear again. Every time we go to the other, every time we see everything as other. So when we're able to see everything as source energy, everything as source energy, just like us, we've gotten closer to this alignment that allows us then to allow a new existence to come into form. How far, Stephen, do you see? I know it's an opinion question, but like how far away is humanity from getting to that place? Um, well, so it's already here. Yeah, it's happening right now. It's it's here. Everything we need is already here if we allow ourselves to see it, if we allow ourselves to experience it. It's happening in this conversation. It is. And it's it's always been here. It's It's never not been here. It's just what we choose to come here, we choose this experience. And that's what we're doing. We're having the experiences that we chose to come here. Now, we can do it from a victim perspective or right. we can do it from a knowing perspective. And right. when we do it from a knowing perspective, it's the same experiences, but we experience them totally different. Right. So we can ex we can experience the, quote, uh, pandemic and or what I like the term now is the ascension flu. Right. Um, we can experience the ascension flu as happening to us or we can we can experience it as our choice to recalibrate. And this is the experience of recalibration. And while it may not be physically comfortable, that's okay. Because here's another thing. So, you know, this guy, uh, I forget his name, the guy that does the cold plunges. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Uh, uh, Wim Hof. Yeah, Wim Hof. So, you know, I had a friend and he said, well, I, I did the cold plunge. And I said, well, what was your experience? And he goes, euphoria. And I went, hold on a second here. You you plunged into ice cold water and it felt yeah. euphoric? I said, holy mackerel. But it begins to show. Now, when I fell through the ice as a kid, and you know, it didn't feel euphoric. But the 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 lines between what these different things are are beginning to shift. Yeah. You know? And what if sickness and illness is just a replicated idea of something that isn't even necessary yeah because if we're source energy there is nothing the matter well that's what that's what i always say i'm like look if we are truly energetic beings right we are standing waves and vibrating particles like you said source energy spiritual yep. beings in a physical body yep. how do you get sick like exactly. even me right <laughs> like how have i actually been sick in the last week other than this has been a block of energy that I have been going through and I have been in resistance to whatever I've been in resistance to, which is really just like realizing that like I can do anything I want and it's nailed it. part of the ex universe expansion expanding. It just nailed it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it, you know, it's, uh, it, it's awesome. And I'm really grateful that I did this podcast with you and that you and I were able to, I mean, cause you did help me once again, <laughs> but it's like, it's, uh, you're right. I mean, it, 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 this is possible to anyone, but you have to open your mind and, 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 and receive the frequency of this allowance to, to occur. Yes. And it is about receiving. It's about allowing yourself to receive. So there's another Rumi quote that I like, and it says, ours is not to seek for love. And I changed it a little bit, but it's to find and clear all of the things we do to block it. Right. So love is the energy of the universe. That's it isn't it isn't what we think of as love. What we think of as love is really caring because right. love embraces everything. So whatever your experience is, embrace it. Allow yourself to fully experience it. And as you do, you will expand. You will expand as you let go of the fear, as you let, because that's the only thing that constricts you from expanding is fear. Beautiful. Very beautiful, Stephen. Ma amazing podcast. I'm really grateful that I brought you on here today. Um, if somebody wants to work with you, connect with you, podcast with you, uh, what is the best way that they can do that? Well, you know, um, I don't really do any kind of promotion. So my, I mean, 
there's my website, showcreekwilderness.com. Um, my email is svsedmac at mac.com if anybody wants to have a chat. But what I would suggest is three things. Number one, I have uh, something that I work with called the Harmonic Egg. So check out, go to harmonicegg.com. Check it out. If there's a Harmonic Egg in your area, go have an egg experience. You know What, what was the website again? Harmonicegg.com. Harmonicegg.com. And then, then there's two sources that I've encountered that I don't see continually promoting um, fear. And one is a fellow by the name of Paul Selig, P-A-U-L Selig, paulselig.com. And he's a channel and he channels um, uh, information that I think is in alignment with what I'm talking about. And then the other one is, I don't know, when I grew up, there was a, there was a singer by the name of Paul Anka. I don't know if you remember Paul Anka, the singer. I'm a kind little older there. Okay, yeah. so his brother's name is Daryl, Daryl Anka, and Daryl is a channel, and he channels Bashar, and Bashar yeah. is a being from yeah, my, my my audience knows Bashar. Okay, all right. So again, those are two good sources to give you some ideas to play with that will allow you to expand because in Bashar's world, you know, there are infinite number of realities right now, this moment, and every moment you're choosing which to align with. So those are those are the things to play with. And then if somebody, you know, wants to chat or has a question or something, they can reach out to me. But I'm not really, you know, looking to promote anything other than. Other yeah, than no, that. I understand. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, uh, yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah. it's just uh, a, a ritualistic habit to ask somebody at the end sure, of the show. Sure. Like, how did you promote yourself? Because we're all about <laughs> doing, 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 doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, listen, brother, I'm really grateful that you were able to come on here today and talk to me and uh, and share your wonderful ideas. But I mean, I'm in total agreement. Uh, the universe is all about ex uh, 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 expansion. About, it's about expansion. It's been in a little bit of contraction, I think, a little bit too much in the last <laughs> couple of years. Uh, but you're right. I mean, all of us have this choice uh, to allow for this expansion and to, you know, again, see things from a non con condemning or non judgmental way and just be okay with like whatever choice anybody makes, because we're all again, connected at a soul level. Yeah. 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 We are all one. So anytime you reference something other than that, boom, you're playing with fear and that's okay too. Just realize you're doing it and enjoy it. Have fun. And Beautiful. what a what a what a uh, what a pleasure to get to know you like this, and I hope we're able to stay in touch and continue. Oh, for sure. We'll, we're, we're, no, yeah. we'll, we'll, we will keep talking absolutely. Yeah. And again, I'm just grateful that you came on today. So, guys, for all of you guys, uh, support the amazing folks that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. Go to uh, shopecreekwilderness.com, and then of course go to Stevens Harmonic Egg.com. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.